Okay, let's go ahead and get started. If you would lie down on your back, kind of spread yourselves out so you're not right next to someone so that if you need to put your hands out, you have plenty of room. Then once you get on your back, let's just get uh, our focus concentration going right down into the core muscles. So interlock the ribs, which will then start to pull your belly button down into your spine. And then your spine will start to spread against the mat. And that should feel good to loosen up those muscles in your lower back. Once you've got everything nice and tight in the core, place your hands behind the back of your head. Fingertips light and elbows wide. Anchor your feet into the floor. Then start to engage the stomach and lift and lower and lift. Now there's a big difference from lifting from the head and the chin and the neck or engaging the stomach and lifting through the abdominals where the position of your head stays the same. It's not a lot of moving through the neck. Careful on the down to come down and lengthen slowly. Just as you go up, you resist gravity up, but you resist gravity down. Lift up and lengthen and lift. Now, a little change on the feet position. Bring your legs a little closer together as you continue to lift and lower your torso. Lift your heels off the ground so you feel the point in your toe. Very little weight in your feet will create a lot more work in your core muscles. So you want to engage deep into the core. And especially when you come down, be careful not to pop the ribs or the belly. Lengthening out the as you lower and lift. This time, take the head up and hold up. Bring your tiptoes up off the ground. Lower your tiptoes down into the ground and lift back up. Focus on that lower stomach, lower back, anchoring to the mat. Keep your tiptoes down here. Lower the shoulders. Lift your shoulders. Lift your tiptoes. Lower the toes and lift. So the movement of the legs very controlled, very deep anchoring through lower tummy. Push the toes down, hold them there, lower the shoulders. Lift up, lift the toes, push the toes, and lift the toes up. Push them down and up, take them down and hold them there, and lower the shoulders. Engage and lift, tiptoes up, tiptoes push, and lift, and push, and lift. Last one pushes down, and lower the shoulders. Relax your feet against the floor. Reposition the hands behind your head and the elbows out. Lift your torso, bring your right knee up. Gently set the toe down. Lift up, and set down, and lift up. And moving very slowly through this sequence, Bring the knee into the chest. Extend the leg out over the floor and lengthen the body open. Pull back into the chest and lengthen open. And pull and lengthen and pull. Good. Little change on this next one. Knee comes in. Lengthen. Then kick the leg up to the ceiling as you lift your torso. Pull the knee in. And again, you want to lift by engaging, not by pulling on the neck. Lift and kick. Pull the knee in, lengthen, kick up. Now take that move a little faster. Knee comes in, kick out, kick up. Pull in, out, up. In, out, up. One more. Keep the leg straight, slow down and lift up. With your right leg moving, take your left arm over the top of your head and reach across to the leg. Reach and lift, open and lengthen. Lift up and open and lift. Lengthen, take it one more time. Lift as you come down, place your foot against the floor. Reposition the head and the hands and the shoulders and the elbows and lift. Now as you come up, the left knee comes in, touch down, and lift. Gentle touch with the toes so you don't want a lot of weight on your feet. And down, and up. This time the knee comes in. 
Extend the leg out over the floor, lengthening the body. Pull in and extend. And pull in and extend. Careful not to yank on the neck. Pull in. This time, kick out, lengthening. Then kick up towards the ceiling slowly. And lower down. Pull the knee in. Lengthen. Kick up. Pull the knee in. As you kick up, nice place to exhale the air deep out of the belly and pull down. One more of those. Pull in. Extend. Kick up. Now we'll take this a little faster. Keep the control. Lift in and kick up. And this is where you need to be careful on the neck. The tummy pulls you up, not the neck. And lift. One more. Pull in. Kick. Keep the legs straight. Slow down. Lift. With the left leg moving, reach your right arm up and lengthen across. Open it up. Pull. Lift. And open. Pull. Lift. And we have two more of those. Pull and lift. Open. One more. Up. Up. And down. Bring your feet to the floor. Relax your head. Shake the tension out of your neck. Place your fingertips back behind the head. Bring the head and torso up. Then bring your knees into your chest. Extend your legs straight up and scissor the legs apart. Two more scissors. One more. Pull the knees into the chest. Lift the chest. Lower the chest and the feet. Lift the torso. Pull the knees in. Extend the legs. So this is our scissor combination. Three scissors. Very smooth from one move to the next. Pull the knees in, lift the chest, lower everything down. Engage the stomach, lift the shoulders. Pull the knees in, extend the legs, scissor the legs apart. Scissor again, one more. Pull the knees in, lift the chest, lower down. Take it one last time. Torso comes up, the knees come in, the legs extend, good. And they scissor three. And two, and one. Pull the knees in, lift the chest, lower the chest. Good. Relax and take the arms over the head. Lengthen the legs for a second. Give that stomach a good stretch. Then pull the knees into the chest. Take the hands to the front of the legs. Again, engaging the stomach will pull the chest up to the legs. And then bring your chin forward to where you feel a little more relaxed through the neck. Reach your arms over the head, legs extend to a diagonal, hold it, then circle around the sides and pull into that tuck. A little faster, reach out, pull in, out, and as you pull in, pull in and up, out and in. Good. Reach out. Let's do four more. One movement Re goes right into the next. Very smooth transitioning from here to here. Two more. And bring it in. One more. And as you lower the torso, shake the tension out of the neck. Reach the arms over the head and extend the legs one at a time until both legs are straight. Starting with the center, where your powerhouse is, that's where the move's going to initiate. Start to pull that belly button down into your backbone. Hold. Bring your hands, head, and feet just barely off the floor. Bring your knees into your chest, into that tuck position. This is a variation of that exercise you just did. Now extend your arms and legs so they're just barely over the floor. And resisting gravity, lower them slowly. Start with the belly, pull down and in, lift the hands, head, and feet. Bring it into a tuck. Reach out. Slowly open the body as you lower the hands and the feet. Start with the belly, pull the belly down, lift hands, head, and feet. Bring your chin forward. Circle into the tuck. Reach back out with the hands, head, and feet still off. Then resist as you lower down, and we'll go one more time. Belly pulls in, hands, head, and feet pull up. Circle around and pull into the tuck. Then reach back out. Now slowly resist. I think that's the hardest part right there. Good. Relax the tension out of your neck. 
Place the hands underneath your hips. Keep your left leg pushing against the floor, and as the left leg pushes down, pull the right knee in and then the right leg up. As the right leg goes up, pull the pelvis down, anchor it into your hands, push that left leg down, and take a little circle inward with your upward leg. Inward circle. The bottom leg never feels loose. Pressure down into the floor, which will help you keep your hips from moving, and then the tummy muscle tight. Reverse and go outward. This should be coming from your center, so you should feel your abdominal muscles controlling the leg movement. Circle out, circle out. Now this circle gets a little bigger and slower. Cross the body, then drop. Down, open, side, and up. Cross, drop, open, lift. And do this circle without letting the leg pull your body. Now reverse and go outward, out. Drop, around and up, out, down, and up. One more. Good. Bring that knee in. Place that foot against the floor with some pressure in the leg. Pull the left knee in and the left leg up. Pull the belly button down into your back. Anchor the hips on your hands. Lots of strong leg pressure in your right leg. Circle the left leg in. Circle in. In. Very first movement of the leg should be felt right there in the abdominals immediately. Now reverse the circle and go out and around. Out and around. It's not a very big circle right now. Just enough to kind of challenge the center. Now re reverse bigger and slower. Cross, drop, open, lift. Cross, drop, open around and lift. Pushing down with that right leg into the floor to help anchor the hips. Reverse the circle, out, drop, across and up, out. Two more. Last one. Good. Pull the knee in. Give him a little tug. Keep your right knee into your chest and extend the left leg out over the floor. As your hands are around your leg, engage the stomach, lift shoulders. Keep going, keep going. Then bring the chin forward so the neck is relaxed and switch legs. Feeling that cinched up belt line all the way around the waist. So the waist is engaging the whole stomach area, which pulls the shoulders up. Be aware of the placement of the chin, which will relax the neck if you can get right in that right place. Couple more. Keep breathing through it. Finish this last one and hold it. Extend that leg straight up. Now again, cinch up the belt line to lift the shoulders. Now switch and scissor your legs and switch, and switch. Careful not to drop the shoulder so you keep that belt line tight through the whole entire exercise. Breathing through it, don't hold the breath. In through the nose, exhale out the mouth. Inhale, hold the movement right here. Hand goes behind the head. Keep your legs there, take the other hand, then pedal the legs backwards, keeping the head up, the shoulders up, the elbows out, scooping, keeping the movement very smooth. Couple more. Three, two, one. Pull the knees in and lower the torso down. Place the hands underneath your hips. This is a two legged circle, so extending the legs up from there, keeping the head down and the pelvis anchored into your hands. A four count circle starts to the right. So it's right, down, to the side, and up. Takes four counts to drop, three and four. One, two, three, four. Now at the end of this one, reverse, stop the momentum left. So as you get stronger in those core muscles, the circle size can increase, get bigger range of motion, but still done in the same amount of counts. 
Stopping the momentum through the center, reverse and go to the right for two circles. Now left side for two, side, drop. That drop is the hardest part to come out of, right? There, reverse one of each, go to the right, drop. Now to the left, to the right, and to the left. Place the feet down. Reach the hands to the side of your body. Now you don't want your feet real close on this one. You want to slide your heels a little further away from your hips for some leverage. Then we take the right knee to a knee-to-knee -knee diagonal, which means the knees are right across from each other. You're not up too high or down too low. That's a very disciplined position on the leg. Using the abdominal strength that you have, arms are at the side, You're, you will engage the center and come up and put your hands around that straight leg. You have four counts to get up there. Here we go. One, two, three, four to go down. Keeping the leg in position, come up in four, using the abdominal strength, not momentum, but muscular strength right here. Now there is that sticky spot about halfway up. That's where your challenge lies, to get over that sticky spot without throwing the body. Let's go one more time. And lift up, up, now up and lift and lower. This time, come up a little quicker and grab the leg. Turn and twist to your right. Bring it back to the leg and lower down. Again, reach up and grab the leg. Open to a side twist. Close it and lower it down. Here we go again. Lift up and grab the leg. Open to the twist. Center and come down one more time. And lift up and open and close and come down and hold and switch to the other side. So disciplined position, that knee-to-knee -knee diagonal. And even when you come down, it's tempting to kind of drop that leg. Try to hold the position at that knee-to-knee, -knee, using the abdominal strength, four counts to come up to the leg. Slowly lift, two, three, four. And you'll notice the bottom leg position really does matter. If it's too close into the hip, it's going to be hard to get up and lower down. Abdominal strength deep into the core and lower down. And this would be a great place to exhale on the hard part, which is the coming up. And lower down. One more. Slowly lift up. Now keep that leg in that position. Come down and come up quickly in two counts. We have a one, two, and open. Center. Come down. And lift up. And open. And center. Coming down. Two more. Lift up. Open. Close it. And come down one more time. Lift up and open and close it and come down. Good. Bend your knee. Place the hands behind the head. Moving on to some more of our series of five work. It's been kind of shifted out of order with other things in the middle today. Bring the knees into the chest. Then extend, or then bring the torso up. Again, you don't want to pull from the head. You want to engage through the center. From here, extend your legs to the ceiling. Lengthen towards the floor. Hinge up. Knees come in. Quality over quantity. So quality means you've got to listen right here to determine how low you go. If you're fatigued today, maybe that leg drop is a little smaller. You're coming in fresh today and you feel really strong. Test the strength of your core and lower the legs a little deeper. You can even put a little bend in the knee. <sighs> Lift. We'll do two more. Keep the torso lifted, the shoulders off. Lengthen. Hinge up and pull in. Take it one more time. 
Lower down, as you come up, stay up at the top. Reposition the torso and lift. Open the legs and circle down and through the middle. Again, the circle size is being determined by the strength of your core today. How tired are you? How fresh do you feel? Now reverse, go down through the center, around the edges, keep the head and torso up. Those little details make a difference in how you execute the move and your safety. One more, and circle, bring the knees in. Open up the chest, anchor the hands, the elbows, the shoulder blades into the floor. Keeping your knees in, start to pendulum over to the right. Catch it and lift. Pendulum to the left. Catch and lift. Over to the right. Pull and lift. Don't let the legs touch the floor. Catch them and use your center. As you let your legs drop, catch and pull. Take it one more time. Come up to the top and hold. Increasing the lever length, put 90 degrees underneath your knees, and that lever will be a little more difficult as you keep that angle and let the legs pendulum now to the right side. Catch, pull up. You'll start to notice that you'll need the anchor in your arm and your shoulder blade, so as the legs start to pull you, opposite direction, anchors down. Couple more. Over to the right and pull, and over to your left and pull up and stay there. Make your lever length or your legs as long as you feel like you have the flexibility for. Anchor your arms, legs go to the right side. Pull through your center, over to your left, and pull, and again, use the anchor in your arm and your shoulder to lift and drop, and lift a couple more. Drop and lift. Take this last one and lift. Bring it back to center. Beautiful. Now let's take that 90 degree angle under the knees and create a tabletop position with the legs, pushing the knees a little further out so they're lined up over your hip bones, not your ribs or your chest, but over hip bones. Feel the line of the lower back down towards the mat, hands at the side. Right toe reaches down and up. Keep the angle under the knees so it's going to feel like you're reaching not only down, but down and out. Focus on this one, lower tummy, running hip bone to hip bone, engaging the lower tummy into the lower back. Oftentimes that area will bulge up, so we want to train it to anchor pulling down into the spine. One more, and it's a little bit harder as we do two legs together right here. Two legs go down together. Takes a lot of concentration right there in that lower tummy, lower back. Two more. Push and lift and push. As you lift up, stay there. Place your hands behind your head. Bringing the torso up just a little bit, so you've just got a couple of inches under your head. It's a hover, not a crunch. So there's a little space under the chin, supported by the head, engaging that upper center. Right toe goes down. I like to think of this exercise now as contracting the abdominals in a T. So you've got down the center, but also running across those lower tummy muscles. Both tiptoes at the same time on this one. Toes. Keep the head up in that tabletop centered hovering position. Two more. And then we'll incorporate the next set of abdominals, which are the obliques. Take your right elbow to your left knee, then switch. So with the crisscross motion, those are those oblique muscles. And if we put this whole combination together, you'll get all those main muscle groups in the abdominals. Three more. And two. Then one, center tabletop, head lifts. Tiptoes reach to the floor and up and down. This time your left elbow crosses to your right knee. Cross. Don't rush it. It's not a fast bicycle. Center, tabletop, hover the head. Tiptoes down and up. Tiptoes down. This time the right elbow to the left knee. Cross cross. 
One more. Now center, hold. Tiptoes push, lift. Tiptoes push. Last time, left elbow crosses. Then switch. One more. Center, hold, tabletop, hover the head. Tiptoes push and lift. And push and lift. Reach out long, stretch it. <sighs> Next exercise, really, a really difficult exercise, but a really functional exercise. Getting in and out of bed can sometimes be a place where people actually throw their backs out. Something as simple as rolling out of bed. This next exercise is going to resemble kind of that feeling of rolling and kind of getting up. Place your right elbow down to the mat with your hand extended up. Then the left hand reaches up to the ceiling so the shoulder is off the ground. It feels very asymmetrical. Now as far as the position of your legs, Typically done with straight legs, but if you need to put a little bend in them, that is a perfect option to help you on this one. So you can decide what you need as you go to do this. As we rotate into that elbow that's pushing against the ground, you're going to feel some obliques moving you. Push down with your right elbow, reach up with your left hand, and as you come up, push to the ceiling with one hand, push down with the elbow, and then you've got that little twist. Uh, torque in the obliques. Come down. Slowly go back up in four counts. Two, three, four. Lower. Push down with the elbow. Come up with the hand. Reach. Now that is so difficult because you're going right past that little sticky spot. Once you get right to the sticky spot, you've got to go a little bit past it and lower down. And again, it mimics getting out of bed. You kind of roll to one side, engage and lift, and lower. We'll be a little more aggressive. Keep it smooth. Come up a little faster. Up and down. Lift. Push through the elbow. Find that anchor point. Push. One more. Push. And come down and switch to the other side. So this time the left elbow pushes down. I always talk about an anchor point, and when you have the anchor point pushing downward, it helps you pull upward in opposition. Four counts, push down with the left, reach up with the right, leaning towards the elbow. Noticing the shift through the abdominals. So you're not coming up right through the center. There's that little shift over to the elbow, which creates that work in the oblique muscle. And lower down. Remember, gravity wants you to come down fast. You're resisting gravity on the downward motion, too. Two counts up. Lift. Release. Push. Release. Two more. Push. One more. Push and come down. Ooh, that's a tough one. Reach the arms out. This is a great transition into our roll-up because the roll-up also deals with that sticky spot and trying to get up and over the sticky spot. When you've got your elbows pushed to the mat, you can't use your hands. But here, you'll be tempted to want to grab the hands or the legs or kick them up. So again, really dig deep into the abdominals to use those abdominal strength muscles to get you up in a full roll up here. Hands come forward, the head lifts and the shoulders and the upper back. Now, here we go, all the way up and reach up, curve in. So where is the anchor, the feet and the legs? If you can push the feet and the legs down as you come up, there's an anchor that can help you lift. Curve back in. Resist gravity on your way down. One vertebrae at a time, we go again. Push the feet into the floor, energize the legs, then lift all the way up. Curve in, don't rush, don't rush. One vertebrae. We go one more time and we'll stay at the top. Hands come forward, the head, the shoulders, the upper back. Here we go, right up through the middle. Good, and lift. Relax your hands. Shake the tension through the neck. 
Then from here, we go into a series of C-curve boat teaser moves. I will start easy. I will progress to harder. You can always go backwards and go to where it's a little easier if you need to, but try not to give up. Place the feet against the floor with the hands underneath the thighs. As you begin your C-curve series, pull your belly button in, scoop out the middle. Now relax your shoulders and your neck so you don't look like you're in pain there. You want to look like you're relaxed. Okay, that's about as easy as it gets. Take your tiptoes to the floor so very little weight is on the feet, and that feels harder. Now you can always go back to this position if at any time you need to. Put your toes down or your hands behind the legs. Next progression would be to let go of the hands. Engage your center to hold your position. Try to relax the shoulders and the neck and even the front of your legs. Place your hands back under the thighs. Next progression would be to lift the toes. Once you're there, you feel okay about that, release your hands. Again, you can always put the hands back or take the toes down. Use your center to hold. Place your hands underneath your thighs. Now here, pull your chest into your thighs and lift up. That's going to give you a relaxing place to go and not panic without having to come down and hold. So you can find that relief for a second. Now C-curve back into position. Release your hands if you can. And then pump. Add some movement. That's harder than holding still. Four, three. Now don't panic. Grab the legs and bring your chest into your thighs and lift your posture up. Take a deep breath. Go back into your C-curve. Control it. Release the hands if you can. Make fists. Double tap the fist above your legs, then open the arms. Two, three, one more. Grab the legs, pull the chest in, and lift your posture. Take some deep breaths and come back into your C curve. Hold. Release the hands if you can. Interlock your fingers. As you pull your arms into your chest, it gets harder. Hold. Four, three, two. Grab your legs and lift the chest. C curve back into position. Release your hands. Interlock the fingers. Bring them into the chest. Twist to the right, left, then center. Right, left, center. Right, left, center. Right, left, center. One more. Grab the legs and pull in. Good. There was a little bit of panic I saw in your eyes. Great thing about Pilates, hard, hard moves. We don't have to do very many of them before we move on. C curve. Release. Interlock. Bring them in. This time, left, right. Go. Left, right. Stabilize the hips. Grab your legs. So we only do about four to eight before something changes. Okay, you're doing great. Let's continue. C-curve. Release your hands. Now extend your lever. Now extend the arm lever. Hold for four counts, three counts, two, one, release down. Good job. Good job. Come on down. Focus next on the inner thighs. Place the knees at the chest and the hands out to the side. Now as you pull your... Uh, Working through inner thighs, you're going to also notice lower tummy on this one. Open your knees, open your legs and straddle. Come up about a third of the way and then open them. Come up a two-thirds of the way, open, then all the way to the top, bend your knees to your chest. Try that sequence again. Open the knees, open the legs. Use the inner thighs and pull, then open. Come up a little bit higher on the next one, open all the way up to the top, bend your knees, again, open the knees, open the legs. Now, of course, inner thighs are used here, but also the tummy pulls down as your legs go up. So it's that oppositional concept again, pull down as you lift up, bend your knees, open your knees slowly, open the feet, 
come up about a third of the way and pay attention to what's going on in the belly muscles as you pull up, all the way up to the top. Bend your knees. We go a little faster on this next set. Open the knees, then the toes. One third, two thirds up, all the way to the top. Bend your knees and do it again. Open the knees and extend. One third, two thirds, all the way up. And bend your knees again. Open, then the legs. One third. Keep that tummy tight all the way to the top. One more time. Knees open, extend. One third. Two thirds all the way up. Bend your knees and hold. Flex your feet. Hands behind the head. Lift the torso. Now we'll do three exercises here. You're going to notice on the first one, you'll tend to grip the legs, and then I'm going to change that. Push the heels to a diagonal. You choose the diagonal. The higher it is, the easier it is on the core. The lower the angle, the more difficult it is on the core. But you never sacrifice position or form. So you have to choose where the best angle is for you to feel challenged, but also to feel like you're doing it correctly. Two more. So when the legs are together, it's easy to kind of use the front of the legs to help our abdominals when the abs are weak. Hold here, open the knees. Place the heels together, keep your feet flexed. Push with the heels. This is going to feel more difficult because when your legs are rotated, you can't use them to help your abdominals. They're busy in the rotated position. This is a lot more abdominal work. Watch the position on the core. So anchor everything down through your back and your abdominals. Last one. Listen to your transition. Lower the feet. Keep your knees open. Lower your torso and give those inner thighs a little rest. So you're feeling that stretch in the inner thighs. Put the soles of your feet together so you can feel the bottom of your feet pushing against each other. Very rarely do I tell you to tuck your pelvis, but I want you to take a tilt of your pelvis so you feel like your hip bones are pushing up towards the ceiling and your lower back is pushing down into the mat. Once you do that, you're going to be very engaged through the pelvis. Your feet are going to feel like they've got pressure against them. Place your hands behind your head. Torso lifts and engages and lower down. Keep the soles of your feet connected. When you come down, don't lose the tilt in your pelvis. So it's easy to hold that tilt in the pelvis when you're up. But when you come down, you have to continue to keep it. Now this time, come up with the torso hold. Come down about halfway in your hover. Lift your feet off the ground, and when they come down, only halfway. So nothing come to, goes all the way to the floor anymore. As you lift and lower your feet, pelvic tilt. Control the down. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> we'll incorporate the torso and the legs together. Deep abdominal work because you can't use your legs to help your abs. Very deep ab work. Torso and the feet, <sighs> halfway down. On these last four, Think of the concept of elbows to knees. Knees to elbows. <sighs> Rib cage to hip bone, pull. Hip bones to ribs, pull. Lower everything down. Good, reach out. Roll over onto one side, and I don't care which one, we'll get them both. For a side series, lower down your arm, rest your head on top of it, get right up on top of the hip, engage the center. I love this side series because, yes, we will get the hip, but you'll also notice some work going on in the obliques and a lot of work in the tummy, which, again, that's our power. And a lot of times we do these side series and we forget where the power really needs to come from. This one will force you to use it. Place your hand in front. You'll notice at times a lot of pressure in that hand. When you notice that, you'll realize you need to work deeper into the center because you should be able to engage here and not even have to put your hand down because you're so strong through the power in the center. 
Hand there for balance. Now bring the top knee forward right in front of your belly button. You're going to feel the weight of the leg wanting to pull you forward. If you push with your hand, you'll be able to pull back. But if you pull with your abdominals in, you'll be able to maintain that position. Now extend your leg forward, and it's even heavier. Abdominals tight. Bend your knees. How much weight are you putting in that front hand? When the leg extends, try to put the work in the abdominals less in the hand and the arm. Push the leg out. Don't let the body fall towards where gravity wants you to fall. It wants you to fall to the floor. That's what it's trying to do. Resist against it. Little change. Extend the leg forward and hold. Now figure eight the circle forward and backwards by adding movement like this even more difficult in the abdominals. One more figure eight. Bend your knee, pull into the center slowly. Extend back out in front of you. Figure eight movement forward and backwards. If you are not engaging the abdominals, you're going to fall forward on your face. You have to engage and push in. Now pull the knee in slowly. Push the leg back out. Careful not to lean into your hands so much. Use the outer hip and lift the leg up and forward. This is hip, but as you come forward resisting gravity, you have to use abdominals. Forward. Push up. Forward. Push up and hold. Knee bends and touches to the mat in front of you. Kick back up. Don't roll forward at all. Don't change the position in your torso or your bottom leg or your body. Just the knee. A little faster. Knee goes down, up, down, up, down. One more. Stay there. Bend your bottom knee. Come up onto your elbow. Take your top leg in your hand. Extend your bottom leg out. Think of the area where your love handles are. Lift up out of them. Yes, nice. Bottom leg to top leg. Pull. It may not touch. You don't want to add extra movement just so the leg can get higher. You don't want to dive your chest down or roll backwards. Work with what you got. More importantly, the love handle area needs to be pulled and lifted and then hold. One more. Take your top leg and cross it over the bottom leg. You're on that hip, so you're not backwards. You're on the hip. Reach out. Both legs. Pull. Posture up. Don't dive the chin or the shoulders. Lift up and out of the love handles. Going four, three. Now I'm going to add four extra ones. Challenge. Take your arm higher, legs higher. Go four, three, two, and one. Good. Bend your knees. Roll over onto your other side. Lie down on your arm and rest your head. Extend both legs straight out. Put your hand in front, but be careful not to lean into it too much. And then draw the center in for your power. Take your top leg. Bring the knee right in front of the belly button. Don't let it fall to the floor. Notice the little extra pressure in your hand. Pull back with your abdominals. Extend the leg forward. It's even heavier. Pull in. Extend slowly forward, feeling the weight of the leg, resisting against it, and pull back in. Take it again. Forward. Hold. Figure eight circle forward. Figure eight circle backwards. So this isn't a real big circle, but it's enough movement to challenge those center muscles. Bend your knees slowly. Come back in. How much weight is in your hand? Push forward. Put it in the abdominal strength instead. Figure eight, your circle forward. Backwards. Forward. And back. And forward. And back. Bend your knee and pull it in. Extend your leg forward. Using the side of the hip, lift your leg to the ceiling. Up. Come down, engage the center, push up, engage so you don't fall forward to the floor, push up, 
and engage center. Lift up and engage this time. Lift up and hold at the top. Bend your knee. Let it gently touch the mat in front of you. And do it again without rolling forward. And lift. Pull in. Lift up. Pull in. We take it a little faster. Don't let yourself roll forward at all. Down. Push. Down. Push. Two more. One to go and hold at the top. Stay right there. Bend your bottom knee. Come up onto your elbow. Reach out for your top leg. Extend your bottom leg and then lift up out of the love handle area. Keeping your posture tall, bottom leg comes up to the top leg. Again, it doesn't matter if it touches. You're better to not touch and hold everything lifted and still than try to dive forward and get more out of it. Lift, good, nice posture, you guys. Four more, pull, pull, pull one more time. Lower the leg and lower the top leg to the ankle. So your focus is right there on that, again, love handle area. So lift up out of it, lengthen the neck area, push down with your elbow, push your hand out. Don't use your torso. Use the strength from the center. Lift your legs up, up, up. Coming right there from that love handle center. Even the center, no matter where it is, it's always going to be the strongest part. Now take your arm higher, lift higher, up, love, and lift, one more, up, nice, bend your knees, sit all the way up, focus yourself forward on your tummy, I'll face you so you can see me, and as you lower down, all the way to the tummy, this next move is called a reverse push-up. Normal push-ups start up, come down, and go back up. A reverse push-up starts down, goes up, and comes back down. In a lot of ways, this can be harder. Gravity, pull, is much more difficult this way than if you were to start up. So tuck your toes. The key to this one is to come up in a straight line, and that is the hardest part. Most people want to push the chest and then lift the hips and the pelvis. You want to try to do this in one straight line. So where's the heaviest part of you right now? Kind of that pelvis area, the center. So that's got to pull up. And then from there, the chest and the legs can push up. OK, get ready. Push down with the hands and feet. Pull in with the tummy and try to lift in one straight line. Hold at the top. Did anyone sense a little inchworm type movement? <laughs> OK, slowly against gravity, lowering down. Don't give in, don't give in, don't give in, don't give in until you get right to the bottom and then let release. OK, let's try it again. Push down with the hands and the feet. Pull up with the tummy. One straight line. Go. <sighs> Engage the center. Then lower all the way down, slowly resisting. Resist, resist, resist. And once you get right to the bottom, you can let go. One more time. One more time. Hang on, I lost my mic. Toes, hands, center, push. All the way up. Hold. <laughs> now resist, coming down, coming down, coming down. Slowly, once you get right to the bottom, <laughs> release. Test, test, test. Hang on. Test. There we go. Okay. Okay. Last exercise of the day. Some scorpion plank work. <laughs> so most of you have done the scorpion with me before. If you haven't, there's a section in the scorpion where you're not going to be able to see me. You're going to have to listen to my cueing because you'll be facing kind of up and backwards. The other thing you can do is look at people around you. So you're going to end up, let me just show you, for those of you who have not done scorpion, you're going to end up in this position right here. And a lot of people get there, and then they're looking around to see what it's supposed to look like. Knee bent, leg straight, arm up. I will then tell you to drop your hips. The reason I tell you that is that gives you leverage to lift the leg. If you try to lift your leg when you're up like this, not going to happen, OK? So the little cues I give you, I give you to help you 
try to listen to them. Come up on your hands and knees. Our goal is to do a right side, a left side, a right side, and a left side without collapsing in the middle. By moving through the movement, you'll never have to hold anything for very long. Get into your plank with your legs extended and your chin lifted. From there, lift your right leg up. Bend your right knee, cross it over, and reach your right arm up to the ceiling and look up. Drop the hips a little bit. Pull with your leg and reach across and engage your center. This is working every muscle in your body right now. Don't give in. Don't give in. Now reach up with the arm, down with the leg. Come back over. Reposition. Take your left leg up. Bend it. Cross it over and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Drop the hips a little. Lift the leg up and reach across. Engage the center. Hold. Three, two, one. Reach up. Come back over. Halfway there. <laughs> Reposition. Right leg. Bend it. Cross it. Reach up. Drop the hips. Lift the leg and pull. The key to Pilates is moving with control, not speed, control. Reach up, lengthen, come back over and reposition. So as you go through this last one, leg up, don't rush it, bend it, control the body weight as you lift and reach. Drop the hip a little, pull and reach across. Engage your center. Hold your strength. Three, two, one. Reach up. Flip back over. Bring your knees in underneath. Sit back and reach forward. That was a pretty powerful Pilates class. When we say power Pilates, we don't necessarily mean jumping, leaping. We mean going through the moves without a lot of stopping in between. That takes an incredibly powerful body and a very strong one too. And today, you were able to accomplish a lot of exercises in one hour. Take the hands down by your feet. Drop the forehead to the mat. That's a power Pilates class. Accomplishing a lot using the entire body. Slow breath. Feel the muscles in the back. Expand and release as you breathe. Kind of like an accordion as they open and push back out. Then bring the hands to the floor. Curve the spine into a cat stretch. Drop the head. Sway the back in an opposite position, lifting the hips, lifting the chin. And come back to neutral. Bring your feet forward until you are in a seated position. I will face you. And open the legs into your straddle. When I say your straddle, respect your stretch. So if it's here, it's here. If it's here, it's here. It's not a big deal. Then lift up out of it. Reach that left arm over and stretch through the side. Then reach the hand up. Open the hand slightly back. Reach back over. Turn and face your leg and reach across. From there, take the hand to the head, and as you start to pull the neck into a stretch, keep your right hand either on the floor or on your leg so you feel this stretch down the, ch the neck, the shoulder, and the arm. Then bring the hand down and bring your right arm over.
reach up, look up, let the arm just fall enough behind you to feel a little stretch in the shoulder. Reach back over, rotate towards the leg and reach out across. Now, even something like this stretch is going to be determined by how long your torso is, how long your arms are, how short or how long your legs are, how tight your back is, or how short the ligaments and the tendons are through the muscles and the joints. Lift up, take hold of the head, gently pull. So again, you respect the way you were born, the way you were put together, and work with what you have as we stretch more for mobility than flexibility to help us continue to stay mobile, and not so stiff. Interlock your fingers, place them behind the head as you gently push forward, just stretch the neck. And then interlock the fingers and lift up. Pull the shoulders down, but the arms up. Use your back muscles to stretch. There you go, good. Rotate over to the side, taking a moving stretch forward where you can find the stiff spots rather than just holding still. Work through them, come to the other side, and lift back up. And then reverse that stretch going back over, moving through the center, all the way around to the other side, and come back up. Release your hands, collapse forward, release the back. Let your head drop. Then sit up and bring your legs together. Take your right leg and cross it over your left. Wrap the left arm around it, hand behind. Now you've got a couple of options. You can keep that leg straight, or you can tuck it under for a little more stretch. If you have bad knees, keep it straight. And now switch sides. Again, you can take that option of tucking that leg underneath or leaving it straight out. And then come out of that stretch, leaning back onto one elbow. So you'll be on your side, taking your top leg in your hand, grab it with your hand at the foot or the ankle, pull it back, open up the arm, but the stretch goes right down the front of the thigh. That's that common area we tend to grip. When something is weak, such as our core muscles, we look for that strong leg to help us. The more and more you practice Pilates, hopefully the less that will happen. Release your leg, rotate over onto your tummy. You'll be facing back. Once you're on your tummy, push your elbows down, lift your chest and your chin. Pull your shoulders away from the ears. Good stretch for the tummy muscles right down the center of the abdominals. Then continue around your circle. So you come to the other side. On your elbow, reach back with your foot and your hand, stretch down the center, or the front of the thigh. Now release your foot, push yourself up onto your hip, get your feet onto the floor, shifting your weight into your feet, and start by lifting the hips. Keep the joints in the back of the knee a little soft if you want to bend them or shake them out. And then completely bend them and roll up one vertebrae at a time. As you come to the very tip top, take a deep breath in. Exhale, take another one as you come to the top. Put your hands together, bring your hands to your heart. Give yourselves a hand. You guys did a good job today. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll see you next week.